black-footed albatross. I think it's really a frigate bird, but they told me the locals call them an albatross, which brought back old Coleridge, of course. Just where the sliding tide shreds into whitish tatters on the shore, an albatross stands, draggled wings cranked wide, the feathers like charcoal streaks fanned out in the late day wind, each foot a splash of ink on the sand. We creep close, near enough to touch and snap his picture. A boy prances and flaps his arms, but the bird doesn't scare. He stares out to sea. Shadows stretch thin on the wave-pummeled beach, beak uplifted like a brujo's stick finger. He must be dying, someone says. But this creature's never heard of Coleridge. When the time feels right, he thrusts himself two quick steps forward and up, lifting and veering over the swells close in, then the far white caps. The next day, he is back jet-eyed, imperturbable. Is this a private ritual or a kind of annunciation? I can almost hear him. There are many worlds in this world, each alive with many gods. Mine go by names your tongue is too thick to pronounce. 